Okay, we're back. I gotta say, this is pretty insane for me. Who would have thought a poor little boy from the Philippines would have three top tier headphones like this sitting on his desk? Uh, these are almost $2,000 headphones. Who can afford these damn things? But we'll find out, so cue the intro. Oh, we can't afford an intro, that's right. Uh, we spent all our money on headphones. So let's get started. I'd say overall the LCDX is Okay, so you know what that means. Time to buy some new headphones. Well, these aren't actually new, but you know, let's now compare four headphones instead of three. We've got the ZMF Aeolus here, the Odyssey LCDX, the Sennheiser HD 800S, and the Hi-Fi Man Aria. So loaded review today, but we're gonna make the best of it. So in regards to amps, for each headphone, I'll mention how it pairs with something new and accessible, um, something traditional and high-end, and while we're at it, let's throw in a capable transformer coupled tube amp to round things out. All right, let's get started with the Hi-Fi Man Aria. Boom. You know it, but I love this headphone. It just seems to hit all the right notes. You're probably sick of hearing how good these are from, from everyone on the forums and, and online on YouTube. It seems every audio nut has one of these sitting on a stand somewhere. But let me tell you why so many people like it. So most cans out there, they tend to excel in a handful of genres, such as the HD800s. But then if you want to listen to something completely different, you'd switch to another headphone because it sounds noticeably preferable for the application. That doesn't really happen with the Aria. You can throw just about any genre of music at the Aria and it will do it justice nearly all the time. And that trait is really monumental. It's a characteristic you would normally find from the God tier cans, uh, from something like Abyss or something like the Suzvara. Lows are well-defined and lightning fast with noticeable impact. Classical is an absolute joy. It's epic in scope and size. Um, any track with a big orchestra sounds, uh, just sounds great thanks to the really wide soundstage. Jazz gets proper treatment from the Aria, as you can imagine. You get top-notch Attack and Decay, um, really airy presentation. It also gives you really great highs while not being sibilant at all. Smooth and low-end frequency response. It's just, it feels like the whole package. And, and let's go down the list uh, as far as music genres. Pop, hip-hop, indie, EDM, folk, country, uh, acoustic music, all sound really exceptional. The biggest negative of the Aria, I have to mention, uh, at least sound-wise, it can feel a little distant or almost hollow at times due to the just super open and airy soundstage. Mids can sometimes feel like they're far away and getting secondhand treatment compared to everything else that's going on. And after the initial honeymoon phase of the Aria, after, after it wears off, you may find yourself looking for some more body or fullness to your songs. And when I mentioned the genres previously that these excel at, you'll notice I didn't really mention rock. I feel the Aria doesn't match the level of soul needed here, I'll say. And although they technically produce a great dynamic sound, I would immediately switch to the LCD X's and be much more satisfied at the fullness while listening to rock. This is where you supplement your Aria with a $200 drop HD6XX and call it a day. The bottom line is you can listen to the Aria's for what seems like hours on end. They're lightweight, super comfortable, and the extremely dynamic and fun presentation makes for an experience where it feels the headphones have just disappeared off your head and you're just enjoying your music. Pretty amazing. If I had to choose one word to describe Hi-Fi Man's Aria, it would be balanced. Okay, amp pairings, the SP200. There's just details everywhere, details galore. It's super clean and crisp. This pairing really showcases just how amazing the THX amps are. I feel like I'm not missing anything, and the Aria is really at its most transparent here. The V280, the big boy. Here we have a more romantic sound with the top end slightly rolled off. You can inch up the volume more than the THX and feel a bit closer to the music while not feeling too harsh. Plus with the less attention on the top frequencies, we have the added benefit of the sound being much less fatiguing. 
you get the impactful presentation with pop, electronic, and hip hop. Really nice. As for the KNHA 6A, I, I consider it the jazz king. Aria plus the KN is a beautiful marriage, blessed by the Chinese audio gods. It just goes to show how different amplification can really affect and change a headphone. Um, but it really is a really nice and engaging combination. So my favorite test song for jazz is Wabash Blues, Wabash Wabash by Duke Ellington. Uh, and it's super smoky feeling. I don't know how to describe it. It's just very tuby, smooth, uh, brassy. And you get that tube sound signature and it feels like something gritty and raw is power, powering something pure and potent. It's like Beauty and the Beast. It's a, it's a really fun combination. Okay, fit and finish. Um, fun topic with Arias. I'd say the fit is near perfect. Uh, even with glasses on, it's, it's, it's super light. It covers your entire ear with its big, like massive ear cups. Uh, as for the weight, it comes in at 387 grams. Um, so that's about 100 grams more than the Ather 2s from Mr. Speakers. They're at 290 grams. But I directly compared them both when I was buying these. And I personally preferred these. It is better on details, just the full balance, the full picture. And I, even though it was heavier, the it still fit better. It was more comfortable to my ears. And finish will be a point of issue for many headphone geeks. For the price, it doesn't look or feel like a $1,600 headphone. It creaks when you're stretching them out. I don't know if I get that. Uh, and if you wear glasses, any little movement it, it may cause uh, the creaking sound, but it's against the ear cups. It, it's more than the other cans I have here on the desk. And out of the four headphones here, the Aria, I have to say, it feels like the most likely, likely to break if you drop it. Many people have had quality control issues with Hi-Fi Man um, models in the past, but I, I guess I've been lucky. I have two Hi-Fi Mans. Uh, one is a three-year-old 400i. It has zero issues to this day. I plugged it in when testing out this k and It still sounds amazing and it works perfectly. And I've had the Aria for a little over a year now and I've had zero issues with it as well. And I do like its super slim profile. It's, it's just a, the ease of use when handling them, picking them up from your desk. It's super simple compared to everything else here. So the price and the extras, comes in at $15.99 retail, uh, and it just comes with a single-ended cable, nothing fancy here. All right, let's talk about the HD800S. So crystal clear vocals, upper mids, everything. It's very enjoyable. My friend Jimmy Lee, who is a real audiophile, he loves to make fun of wannabes like me and to many other people that hate this word, but, but I'm gonna say it, you ready? It feels like a veil is removed when listening to this headphone. The Aria, which is already a really clear and tonally balanced headphone, is simply outshined in timber timbre by the HD800S. Hey Google, how do you pronounce the word timber? That's pronounced timber. Hey, these sexy French words are really confusing us English speaking nations. I say if we're gonna say this word, let's go all in and do it the way Napoleon intended. Oh la la timbre. So this headphone was born for jazz and classical. All the details are presented to you on a gorgeous German like silver platter and it's up to you to choose how to feed it. Do you like stunning clarity and analytical sound above all else? Um, you have the SMSL here for that. Any THX sample do. Or do you like more of a musical presentation with something like a V280? Or do you want to give your tube amp a run for its money and test its metal? That's when you have these two make out and create some beautiful tubey babies. The choice is yours. And I'll also say uh, there's a reason why any, when any new gear is released, people will ask, well, how does it sound with the HD800? Um, it has the uncanny quality of exposing, changing, and shaping itself based on your equipment chain. It sounds like this may be an annoying feature, but honestly, I love it. You change a little thing with your DAC, with, with your amp, uh, a tube, and you'll notice the difference the most with these. And let's get to the downsides, uh, the impact or lack thereof. Um, they have big drivers uh, that provide its famous wide soundstage, but, but I just wanna feel the music more sometimes. 
Um, but despite that, I'm still in the honeymoon phase with this baby. Hook it up to a nice tube amp and you'll tend to forget the world around you and just enjoy for what seems like hours on end. The word for the HD800S is clarity. As for amp pairings, SP200, uh, with all the details this amp shoots out, the effect is really cool. It's almost hard to describe. I, I would say that the overall effect just puts a smile on your face. So the song Sweet Disposition by Temper Trap sounds so lifelike it's uncanny. But yes, we're talking about a THX amp and you get like a cold sound signature uh, with a highly detailed headphone. It can sound like it's missing something. Uh, I felt like I was getting more body, just more feeling and musicality from the V280 and the can. And speaking of which, uh, as far as the V280 paired with this, it's amazingly good. The warm sound signature come from the, coming from the Vioelectric just pairs amazingly well with the 800s. If you visit any Vioelectric thread, you'll hear people going on and on about how their HD800 sounds so perfect on their shiny V281, V2, V200, uh, almost as if they were trying to justify, in my mind, I thought this, I thought they were just trying to justify their multi-thousand dollar purchase because these amps are thousands of dollars. Well, I'm here to tell you that they were probably right. Um, I, I now agree with them. The, the warm tonality of the V280, it just mates perfectly well with the Sennheiser. Uh, it never feels sibilant or harsh. It's a real recipe for just listening just for a long time. Okay, let's switch to a tube amp, um, the HA6A. This is my current go-to pairing. A tube plus an HD800 and I'm set for the day. The setup is relatively new to me and it's just fun to re-listen to all your playlists and enjoy them with a different sound. And despite the lack of uh, warmth and impact coming from the Sennheisers, I don't feel the need to change headphones. I can listen to so much jazz and classical until I'm blue in the face, until I get yelled at by the wife, you know, it's, it's late. You know, I didn't even listen to jazz and classical before this hobby. So, you know, thank you Germany for being you. Okay, fit and finish. These are the lightest headphones on this list. I think they're around 330 grams. Um, which is much appreciated in this price range. They don't clamp as much as I'd like. Uh, sometimes it feels like there are gaps in the cups, like, like it's not fully flush with my head. But I'm telling you, it, it doesn't seem to affect the sound, so it's not a big deal to me. I would say the fit is actually tied with the Aria. And uh, all of the Sennheiser earphone connectors are stupid. I, I think you'll agree with me, or I, maybe you don't, but I just think they're, they're horrible. HD 600 series, their flagship series. Uh, they're notoriously a pain in the ass compared to the competition. They're non-standard, proprietary, just weird choices. Uh, they're a pain to remove sometimes, at least with this. Uh, I feel like you're applying so much force you may accidentally hit the cup when you're removing it, uh, which has happened to me sometimes, but they still, it didn't affect the sound, thank goodness. As for aesthetics, for something that's plastic, the finish is still really, really good. It looks expensive and the headband is nice with its semi-plush uh, yet firm feel on the headband. I, and I don't really mind the frame and the cups are plastic. It's light and it still looks very elegant to my eyes. Um, prices and extras comes in at $16.99, but this time with both a single-ended and balanced cable. They're pretty high quality. I think they're 10 feet. They're, they're pretty long. Um, so it's a good deal. And now let's talk about the LCDX. And I was most interested in these. So they're not the most detailed, but they definitely give the best bass. And I'd say they're the most interesting uh, and different of the three. I dare say they may be the most enjoyable too. Um, but let's get to it. Uh, so far out of these two cans, um, they're the least fatiguing. Um, the highs don't feel rolled off per se, but they never feel as plentiful or as defined as the other two. Uh, this may actually be a good thing in the X's case as you, you want to feel like the power uh, or impact of the music while not getting a headache. Uh, and the bass, we, we have to talk about the bass, but it's just so well defined. It's not overdone and it's definitely not sloppy. It's tight, it's super controlled, yet very plentiful. Uh, it, it extends deep and it's, it's very impactful. The huge magnets inside the Odyssey cans help with this, the, their Fluxor technology. But caveat being, it's the main reason why they're so weighty. The best part to me is, is that as plentiful as the base is, it doesn't really outshine the mids. The mids come across as delicate and maybe even a bit soft, but they're still there and, and don't get 
how done. So the song Lotus Flower by Radiohead, there are a multitude of sounds and synths going on in this track, but I feel like the X is like gently carrying Tom York's voice in its hands. It's just nestling it there safely from all the chaos surrounding it. And it, when it's time to get in your eardrum, it so delicately places his uh, voice in your eardrum. Um, so despite all the action going on, it doesn't outshine the vocals here, and that's really not an easy thing to do. And I really appreciated that on the X. The song First Time by Gray, it shows off planar speed with some fun bassy dynamics. Um, crank up the, the bass with a 120 hertz shelf at six decibels of boost on the RME, and it's insanely fun on the LCDX. It handles the song beautifully. It's like a fountain of bass with all sorts of different low end frequencies, and it's a joy to listen to. And the LCD does not break a sweat here. Just about any rock track will shine better with the X versus the other headphones. You'll get the warmth and the soul from the Odysseys uh, while feeling the impact and reverb from the guitars. What Would I Do by Magic City Hippies has less sparkle up top than the other headphones, and that's when it kind of makes me miss the Arias. And uh, another downside, let's talk about the smaller soundstage of the LCDX. The song I Crawl by Childish Gambino. Big uh, amount of scope. It's like a big epic song when, when it gets into it. Um, but I preferred it on the other headphones. The sound is more intimate here, but this track, to me, it's meant to be, it's meant to sound bigger and echo hauntingly. And the aria accomplishes that noticeably better. So hip hop and pop, they do sound compressed compared to the other cans here. Don't get me wrong, it's still very fun to listen to, but there's less definition compared to the aria. Uh, those two genres are usually compressed at the studio anyway, so, but that's so they sound engaging on a broader range of equipment, on nice things, and also on like small cell phones. So you can't fault the LCDX for those two genres and why they sound so compressed. And lastly, there is a bit of sub bass roll off at around 40 to 50 hertz. My bass test song, Blowback by Galimateus, it came through really powerful, but it seemed to be missing the ultra low end frequency that really tests your headphone drivers. I put the Arias on and it came back through loud and clear. It's sort of a bummer, but most songs don't give focus to frequencies this low. Trust me, it's not a biggie by any means. My one word for the LCDX is Sleeping Giant. Yes, I just made that one word thanks to camel casing. I code for a living, so I'm allowed to do that. Uh, I, I feel, although it's a very big, powerful, and impactful can, like, like a giant, it, it can feel a tad sleepy and nonchalant when it comes to detail retrieval and soundstage and separation. Uh, and pairings, the SP200, decent pairing, the relaxed, non-detailed nature of the LCD-X mates nicely with something that will throw all the details in the world to a headphone. Uh, I would notice details on this pairing that weren't apparent on the other amps here. V280, okay. Big, wide open, powerful sound here. Um, let's get back to rock, but Survival by Muse is presented the best I've ever heard with, with this combo. You get the lightning fast planar speed and just tons of full bodied, milky smooth, yet uh, still detailed sound here. This handily beat out the Aeolus, which is usually the, the full-bodied king. So if you're into rock, this may be the pairing for you. Honestly, I, I was surprised how much better the X performed on the V280 versus the SP200. This, this may just be one of those great pairings where all the, the specs and the measurements line up together and uh, these two make beautiful music together. Some amps and some headphones just mate nicely, and I think this is uh, one of those cases. So tubes, um, the HA6A, it's a good pairing, but as much as I love tube sound, the V280 just kills it here with the details, just the big picture. If I start to get fatigued, then maybe I'll switch to the KN and still get the full bodied warmth. Um, but the highs and lows won't be as fleshed out as coming from a high end solid state amp. Fit and finish, let's start with the gorilla in the room. The fit is simply too heavy for long listening sessions. Uh, what you've heard is true. These are really heavy. When you put them on for the first time, it, it doesn't feel that bad. It doesn't seem that bad, but give it several songs and you'll see what the fuss is about. Uh, it'll get to your neck, to the back of your head. You'll just start to feel some discomfort. Uh, and they're supposed to weigh 650 grams in their stock form, but Resolve Reviews weighed them 
also in stock form and, and got 694 grams. One guy I saw in Joshua Valor's comments uh, said he was getting 624 grams on his scale. Uh, I, I, I really wish Odyssey would step up their game and include anti-gravity pellets in the headband or just some mini jetpacks underneath. Then I think we'd solve the problem here. But you know, this is the price you pay for the, the amazing base these put out. If you have, I have to mention this too, but if you have glasses and you're getting just complete pain like I was, consider taking them off. Uh, the back of your glasses will tend to dig in more to the back of your head uh, with this clamping force. So if you're getting that pressure, take them off, wear contacts, or just leave it off for a bit. As for the finish, it's definitely the best here, um, at least uh, for a modern design. Uh, of all the cans, I would say it's, it is the most likely to withstand a nuclear attack while also looking industrially elegant. Uh, and the, 220, the 2020 revision has a metal screen inside the grill, which looks even better, in my opinion. On um, the price and extras, this is the creator's package that I got, and that comes in at $11.99. Uh, it just comes with a single-ended cable, but it's a high-quality OFC cable. If you get the standard package, it's $16.99, same as the creators, but with the travel case, uh, which doesn't make sense because you can buy the travel case on their site for $130. Uh, I'll put the link in the description, but it, that just doesn't make sense to me. Just stick with the creators package and call it a day. All right, knocking some reviews out here. Now let's go to the Aeolus. Put these right here. So I have these here and people in the comments mentioned it would be Nice to bring them up. So let's make a quick comparison with everything else here. Uh, I describe the sound here as very pleasing, just very full and dynamic. Uh, if if I had a long day at work, I'll power up the tubes. Uh, I'll sit down, and out of everything here, the the Aeolus is the one I'll choose. It, it's just the one when I want to simply want to let go and de-stress. It's when you don't care about hearing all the fine details and just want to get lost in the music, these are the ones to go for. Uh, it's damn near impossible to get fatigued from the sound these produce. It's like, it's reminiscent to me of the Sony ZR1s in, in a different form. These are open back, those are closed back. Uh, it's not the most technical uh, headphone out there, at least compared to the Arias or the HD800S. Um, but it's not meant to be. It's meant to favor musicality and enjoyment over pure details. You can really enjoy the music versus the technicalities when you put these on. When I want to hear anything that doesn't involve strings or brass instruments though, it's, it's, that's the time I usually hang these up and go for a different headphone. The Aeolus, as fun as it is, it just can't keep with the other headphones here for speed and clarity, but it's not supposed to. Um, and honestly, for that, you should probably look into ZMF's Autor or Verite. Autor would probably be in a better price range considering the other ones here. My one word descriptor for the Aeolus would be euphonic. The SP200, let's get into amp pairings, but the SP200, I mentioned this in the Monolith THX deck amp video, but the Aeolus's ability to inject warmth and fullness to a song makes for a decent pairing here. Um, so you won't be disappointed. As for the V280, the relaxed nature of the ZMF, um, plus the more musical presentation of the Vioelectric, had me sometimes missing the details that the SP200 provided. But the added power of the V280 really pushed the Aeolus to uh, its limits. You really got to feel its potential there. So, you know, you lose something, but you gain another. Um, but either way, it's still very pleasing. As far as the KN is concerned, I absolutely love this pairing. It's, it's almost creamy tube overload. ZMF's cans are known for pairing great with tube amps, and it really shows here. I can get lost listening to classical and jazz for hours and pretend that I'm sophisticated, not as sophisticated as these, as these, uh, but still, it's it's a really great, perfect pairing. Uh, fit and finish, it's excellent. What do you want to say? I mean, they they look stellar. Uh, they're light. They don't clamp too hard. The cup is just right on the ear. I have the Universe suede pads uh, with this, and if you do get the Aeolus, consider upgrading to these pads either on purchase or as an upgrade down the road. They're really really comfortable. As for the finish. It has to be the winner here. Plush leather headband, perfectly finished wood ear cups, and well thought out details that you notice and appreciate better the more you examine them in your hands. ZMF never messes around on aesthetics and it shows. Um, the beautiful part is they're able to keep them so light and comfy, which is great. 
price and extras. Um, these were purchased directly from Zach at Can Jam 2020 uh, in New York City. They were a floor model, so I can't really show an unboxing here. But I will say that the default cable that it comes with is the definition of bare bones. I personally had connection issues with mine and had to unscrew the metal um, connector jacket and kind of tinker around with the connection there to get it working again. So I would really consider upgrading to ZMF's OFC cable. I think it's about a hundred bucks. And Odyssey has one and their, their connectors fit ZMF cans, but they have uh, an OCC cable and I really like um, their cabling, but theirs is $150. It is a great deal because the thickness is actually monumental. It's 20 AWG, which is pretty thick for a headphone cable. Okay, we did it. We talked about them all, but let's go down the list of genre winners when it comes to music. I think this will be fun. But for rock, um, LCDX by a mile, uh, you can't compare. It's, it's just full and warm bodied. It, it's, it's really nice. Pop, I give it to Aria. Hip hop, it's a toss between these two, the LCDX and the Aria. EDM, Aria again, you get that impact and the dynamics, it's really amazing. Classical, HD800S, uh, Aeolus, and Aria tie for second place, depending on your mood. Uh, jazz, same exact outcome there. Indie, synth, chill music, I'll give that to the Aria. Really nice, balanced headphone. Country, Aria or the LCDX in that case. And folk and acoustic, let's go back to the Aria. Damn, I sound like I'm biased at this point. Okay, as for competition in the less than $2,000 range, you have the Focal Clear, the Sony Z1Rs, the Odyssey LCD3s, um, ZMF Autores, the headphone, I don't even know how to say it, I know how to spell it. And you also have the Audio-Technica ATX ADH 5000s, I'll just call them the 5000s, but I really would love to try those headphones at some point. Some guy was hogging them at Can Jam, so I couldn't test them out, but I really want to test those as well. And let's do some closing thoughts. If they can, if they can combine the fullness and the slam of the X with the balance of the Aria and keep it around the $1,500 mark, it would, it would really put the higher tier headphones on, on notice. You'd get near the perfect headphone for a much cheaper price. Another takeaway after this video, this is really grow, growing on me, the SP200. Look at this thing, I, I just think it's a marvel. Uh, I get more and more impressed of it uh, whenever I just use it and have to compare with other setups, but it really is amazing. If you haven't give, given THX amps a try, consider getting this, and I may just use this as a reference amp, at least in comparison to the V280 going forward, but give it a try. I really, really like this amp. Okay, we also now have an Instagram, at MidFiGuy, so please follow us for updates in between video releases on what we're reviewing and what's uh, going on behind the scenes. We'll have some goodies for you, so give us a follow. And speaking of goodies, let's talk about what's on deck for upcoming videos. We got, boom, we got a Woo Audio WA-22, that's right. We're gonna compare and contrast these two amps which cost the exact same amount, 2,500. Uh, you can see here I got the RCA gray glass, new old stock tubes, so I'll install those and I'll give you my thoughts on how they compare. We also got the Denifrips Ares 2, the Hypebeast DAC. It's a R2R ladder DAC. So we're gonna test that out compared to the RME ADI 2 and we'll include another DAC that's very expensive, at least to me. Um, so stay tuned for that video. I also got this the PM Dawn single, Set Adrift on Memory Bliss. They don't have that on title for some reason, and it sounds like they had a uh, legal dispute with uh, the band that they sampled. So you can only buy that on CD, so now I have to find out how to rip this. <laughs> and we also have one more thing here. Okay, I know you're sick of surprises, so I'm just gonna reveal it now, but it is a beautiful headphone. Oh la la timbre. Look at that vintage, but my friend Magic Mike let me borrow his headphones and we're gonna be doing the uh, review on this compared to others, but it's just an Audio-Technica, uh, what is it, ADH-50X. So that'll be a nice what headphones to get while working video. And this video took me two weeks to make on top of my normal nine to five job. It, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of work to compare four different headphones with three different amps. Uh, I don't know how you other reviewers do it. I'm very jealous because you make it work, but if you appreciate this review and you want to see more stuff like this, just 
like the smash button and smash the like button and also uh, subscribe. But that's it for us today and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.